It surprises me how many people tell me they really like the season of Lent, right? That seems kind of odd. It's a time of penance and fasting and sacrifice, and yet I probably hear more people tell me that they like Lent than they tell me they like Christmas. I think there's just something about our soul that we like the challenge. Uh, we like it because Lent tends to be a a time of growth for us. Every year the church gives us this season to prepare for Easter. Maybe we don't think about Easter as something we have to prepare for, but it's such an intense time of celebration, right? Uh, there's we're, we're remembering what God has done for us in the death and resurrection of Jesus, how he's given us new life, he's given us the forgiveness of sins, he's given us the life of the church. And so uh, to prepare ourselves for this overflowing, joyful celebration that's gonna come at Easter time, we enter into a time of preparation. And I think there's really a wisdom in that. It's good for us to prepare our hearts before we get into that time of celebration. In a way, I guess I do this in a, on a smaller level. Every time I hit a holiday in my, my family life, right? We have um, Christmas together, or Thanksgiving together, and everyone's together at the house. Uh, for me, um, I choose to not eat anything until we get to the big feast, the big celebratory meal. Because uh, I'm saving my appetite. I'm, I'm saving my, um, my hunger for that big meal. And that may mean that I'm really hungry all the way until the middle of the afternoon but to me, it's worth it because I really want to stuff my face with Thanksgiving stuffing. I prepare myself in a way I'm fasting so that I can enter into the joy of the celebration even more. I think there's something of that when it comes to us as Christians celebrating the joy of Easter. We pull back a bit on the celebratory nature of our life. Uh, we deny ourselves some of the comforts of life so that when we get to the Easter season and we open up those floodgates, we get to receive those things back with a greater joy. We get to receive those things back uh, with a greater gratitude. Christians have been celebrating the time of Lent as preparation for Easter since the early church. Uh, we see in the 200s uh, or the late 100s, St. Irenaeus writing to Pope Victor and just commenting on how Christians celebrate Lent in the East and the West. He was comparing uh, how you know one side might uh, sacrifice for longer or fast longer than the other one. and. But it was clear both sides have this time dedicated, the East and the West are dedicated in time for preparation, for deeper prayer, for deeper sacrifice and fasting. Um, but there just was some differences in the way that it was done. By the time we get to the 300s, it's clear that Lent is a normal part of Christian life. It's referenced by the Council of Nicaea. It's referenced by St. Athanasius and St. Cyril of Jerusalem. And by the time you get to the 400s, it's clear that this has been a standardized practice now where there used to be some differences in how long Lent lasts or what the fasting looked like. Things were beginning to get more standardized across the life of the church in the rest of the world. Um, so that Lent begins on Ash Wednesday and it goes all the way until uh, the Easter Mass on Holy Saturday night. That's a total of 40 days if you don't include Sundays. Penance and fasting have always been part of the spirituality of Lent. And over the centuries, there have been changes in the expectations around what that fasting exactly looks like. Uh, where we find ourselves now in the, in the Roman Catholic Church, in the Western world, uh, the expectation is that we are to fast two days during Lent, Ash Wednesday and Good Friday. And fasting means that we can have only one full meal that day and a couple of other smaller stacks are allowed and we must abstain from meat the entirety of those days. Uh, and then we also abstain from meat all of the Fridays of Lent. Uh, on top of that, we're encouraged to make other sacrifices and do other penances, dedicate some extra time for prayer. But those are just encouragements during the Lenten season. We've just nailed down, this is what fasting is to look like. On top of that, you're just encouraged to really make more of your Lent to make it a time of prayer and sacrifice. But let's be clear, penance is not done for the sake of penance. It's not done for the sake of punishing myself because I'm a sinner. It's not done for the sake of trying to earn God's love. And it's certainly not done for the sake of trying to see how much I can do, how much sacrifice I can manage to do during these 40 days. The purpose of penance is to lead us to a deeper encounter with God himself. We are called to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. None of us does that perfectly, right? But we're striving. We're, we're trying to give the Lord more of our heart, more of our soul, more of our mind, and more of our strength. So I think ultimately the question of Lent is, what needs to change about my life so that I can give Jesus more of those things? How can I love God more with my whole heart, soul, mind, and strength? You know, whenever we choose something, we're actually saying no to some other things. And I think the church is asking us, 
Choose Jesus. Make Jesus your first priority. Because the more that you make Jesus your one and only, is more that you're giving him your whole heart, soul, mind, and strength, you're going to be saying no to other things. Just like when I go to my favorite Italian restaurant and I decided to order the sausage cannoli, it means that I'm not going to be having the chicken parmesan that night. As much as I like the chicken parmesan, there's nothing wrong with the chicken parmesan. I just happen to like the cannoli, right? When I make a positive choice, I'm actually saying no to other things. And it's the same thing with the Lord. When I love the Lord and I'm trying to make him my one and only, my first priority in my life, then it means I'm saying no to other things. To say yes to Jesus means to say no to sin. To say yes to more time with Jesus means saying no to time doing other things. And so this challenge of Lent is to really let Jesus be my one choice, my primary choice, the most important thing to me. What needs to change in my life in order to make that happen? I think if we really want to make Lent fruitful for us this year. We have to decide that Lent is going to be a response to God for everything that he's done for me. You know, in um, Advent of 2021 in the Archdiocese of Denver, every priest preached on what we call the kerygma. Uh, we were talking about what God has done for us. What is the basic proclamation of the gospel? We talked about God creating us to be good. We've been captured by the evil one, but then the Lord rescued us. And that in itself leads us to wanting to make a response to him. If the Lord has given us so much, if he's died on the cross for us, he's given us new life, he's given us forgiveness of sins, what is the proper response? Ultimately, the proper response to give to Jesus is our whole life. It's not enough to say thank you. It's not enough to give him a gift, right? We have to give him everything because he gave everything to us. He's given eternal life to us. There's no way that we could pay him back for what he's chosen to give to us. And so I think if we make Lent, a time of gratitude, a time of choosing to make a response to the best of our ability, giving to the Lord what he deserves for what he has given to us, we're going to find this a really fruitful Lent. So I think if we approach this Lent with that attitude of gratefulness and we make a serious effort to make penance a response of love to God, then this will be the best Lent ever. God bless you.